It may not be as big as Godzilla, but it's just as destructive. It's the Formosa termite, and the recent hurricanes on the Gulf Coast could be bringing it to a neighborhood near you. Why? What does it do? How do we fight it? Who do we turn to in this moment of peril? If you're smart, you ask Dr. Roger Gold of the Department of Entomology at Texas A&M University. We're here today to talk about termites, and there's been a lot in the, in the press in the last few weeks, and actually over the last couple of months, with what is known as the Formosan termite. The Formosan termite was introduced to Texas uh, down uh, in the, sh the ship basin uh, near uh, Houston, Texas, and over in the, the Beaumont area back in probably the early 1960s originally, and since then it's been spreading. In fact, the Formosan termite today is found in 25 counties uh, throughout the state of Texas. It goes as far north as uh, Sherman, Texas, and is as far, uh, found uh, west, uh, clear out into the valley, and to the east up into Tyler and in that part of the state. One of the reasons we're so concerned about the Formosan termite is it has very large colonies. As a result of that, they do a tremendous amount of damage in a relatively short time as compared to our native subterranean termites, which have been here for eons of time. So the Formosan is new to the state. It doesn't have any natural predators or parasites. It has large colonies and therefore eats more wood uh, per day, per week, and per year. The, the, the termites themselves actually are moved around with wooden products. and so. We have, uh, and uh, showing you here at the present time, some mulch, uh, which was uh, brought into the state of Texas. And again, this has been on that famous email that's been circulating saying that uh, termites, uh, some are saying they can live in mulch, and others are saying there's no way they can live in mulch. This is uh, some mulch that uh, we discovered in a home uh, near Corpus Christi, Texas. In the bag of mulch uh, was a colony of termites that had tunneled out of the mulch and had formed a trail across the floor and then up the wall where they did a tremendous amount of damage in a relatively short period of time. And I would just report to you that from this very uh, piece of mulch right here, these pieces of mulch, we recovered these Formosan termites. These were found in a home near Corpus Christi where they had left the mulch bags and had uh, tunneled or made tunnels across the concrete floor, floor up the wall where they had done uh, several hundred dollars worth of damage in a relatively short period of time. The other way that uh, Formosan termites are moved around the state is when people purchase uh, railroad ties, which are, and, and the concept is good that we be recycling the timber resources that uh, we have available to us in the state. And uh, most people would consider that railroad ties are uh, treated uh, wood with creosote. But as you can see when we turn it around, that the uh, termites actually got into this railroad tie and the, the family that purchased this particular tie uh, had it delivered to their home and built into a flower bed and as a result of that the termites then left their railroad tie and ended up attacking the house and then eventually moved to the whole neighborhood and this is near Austin, Texas. And so again by looking at the side you can see that the chemical treatment is actually fairly shallow even on these uh, types of tinder such as railroad ties. The other thing that we'd like to point out that makes the Formosan termite a little different than the native termites is the fact that they have the ability to eat live trees. The native subterranean termites generally don't do that. And so they eat the tree from the inside out. So they eat the heartwood and then the tree becomes weakened uh, through time. And over the last uh, summer we had uh, several hurricanes that hit uh, the southern shores of the United, uh, the United States and as a result these trees which were damaged by the damaged by the Formosan termites basically were easy to dislodge or to break off. Okay, the thing that's interesting about this piece of wood is that this is a, a piece of cypress which is supposedly resistant to uh, termite damage and, but it represents exactly what the Formosan termites do. They actually eat the heartwood out of the out of the tree they thus weaken it and so when we have strong winds including the hurricanes these are the trees that are damaged by the Formosans, are weakened and they blow over and they're the ones that end up being recycled, made into mulch or other wooden products and transported uh, around the country. One of the things that we need to say associated with the lumber and, and the mulch materials that in the state of Texas we do have a quarantine and that quarantine is administered by the Texas Department of Agriculture and that quarantine basically indicates that we are to not move infested material infested with the Formosan termite to any other areas of the state until the material has been inspected 
and if needed, to treat it. Uh, however, due to the lack of resources, uh, these quarantines are very hard to enforce with the state that is as large as, as Texas and or Louisiana, another state that's undergoing uh, scrutiny because of the movement of contaminated materials. As a result of that, we basically have a situation where they have to have a way of disposing of all the, the, uh, the lumber, uh, the timber, uh, the leaves, the twigs, and so forth. And so the mulching that's been going on has been of concern to us, those of us that work with termites, because we know that the termites actually can be transported in the mulch, as I've demonstrated to you here already today. Now, the termites themselves are usually surprising to most people that they're actually relatively small insects. I mean, we hear about the amount of damage they done, uh, that they do, uh, ranging in the millions of dollars. And you can see that they're actually very small, less than a quarter inch in size. But because they live in a colony, they can, in fact, uh, attack structures uh, with a vengeance. In other words, you have all of these little individuals, each of which are eating about 8% of their body weight per day. It, it adds up when you have a million of them. And for that reason, we're very concerned. And to put it into a different perspective, we use for monitoring of termites in the state as part of our research work a piece of uh, one by one uh, lumber which is drilled through so that we can look in there uh, with the borescope and see how much damage is being done to the wood. This is placed into the ground. This one right here represents the amount of damage that we would get uh, from a typical colony of native subterranean termites which have a colony size of about 250,000. Uh, this piece right here is all that remains of the same size piece of wood after a month of feeding by Formosan termites, which have colony size that average over a million individuals. And so they have between four and ten times the size of the native subterranean termite colonies. So to answer the question very directly, why are we concerned about Formosan termites? Number one, they're an introduced species that arrived here without predators or parasites. Number two, that they're moving from the coastal areas in Texas inland, uh, again, over at least 25 counties and probably more once our records are, are caught up. And number three, because that uh, people are not paying attention to the warnings that we're giving them, and they're continu continuing to bring wood products and placing them next to the foundations of their homes in the way of mulches and, and other type of landscaping timbers. They may look good, but they can be an expensive mistake that we can make. The other thing that I would indicate to you is that it's not all that easy to tell a Formosan termite from a regular subterranean termite without some basic training. But by looking at the soldier cast, the soldier's head on the native subterranean termite is more or less rectangular in shape. And it's easy to remember the Formosan because it's teardrop shaped. And if you encounter their Formosan, you certainly will be shedding a tear. The, another thing that we need to be aware of when it comes to termites is that when we're doing our landscaping, that we not get the landscaping so close to the house uh, that it actually touches the house or the roots begin to grow against the house. Because those very roots or the, the, the branches that we're creating are very attractive to a number of insects, again, in, in including the termites. And so landscaping, being concerned and caring about the type of landscaping timbers we're using, mulching, and just being observant go a long ways in helping us to prevent these problems. Thank you, Dr. Gold. That sounds like something that requires not only thought by homeowners, but probably action as well. For more information, go to the website at urbanentomology.tamu.edu.